Okay, what is up guys? So we just downloaded a bunch of data from Yahoo Finance and we cleaned it up and now we are gonna create this very cool looking um, candlestick chart that you can see here. And we're gonna do that by using the ggplot2 and the dplyr packages. All right, so I hope you enjoy this video. Um, let's get started. Okay, so let's start out with a little bit of house cleaning. So we have a couple of data sets in our global environment that are pretty large and are gonna be, um, for back of, lack of a better word, weighing down our, um, our memory. So let's clear those out. So we, sh we should already have them saved right in our working directory. So if they're saved in our working directory, I think we're good to clear them out of our global environment. So let's do that now. And I usually like to start um, by just restarting my R session. So let's do that as well um, because we already have the data. So we're kind of in a new step of this project. So let's do, um, let's load in a new R script and let's bring in our working directory and let's import um, ggplot2, which is our, pa our charting package. And let's bring in dplyr. Um, and now let's actually load one of the data sets that we just got rid of, the returns along data set. So to do that, we are going to um, use the load function, returns underscore. So load returns underscore long. Okay, and that's going to load in the data set back into our global environment. And that's the, that's the data set that we're going to work with for our first chart. Okay, so now, that's, now that that's loaded, um, we also want to make sure that this is very dynamic because we're going to end up putting um, this code into our, our shiny dashboard down the road. And so let's just make this dynamic now so that um, going forward, everything we can just kind of copy and paste into our, our shiny dashboard and everything will work right away. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called ticker and let's put Amazon's ticker symbol in there for now. Um, and let's create a new data set called charting data. And we're going to start with our returns long. And we are going to use a piping function and filter ticker equals ticker. And date is, I think the highest date I have um, in this data set is July 24th of 2020. So let's pull in, um, let's pull in 30 days of data. So we'll take 2020, 26, 24. And let's execute this code. And now if we open up our charting data, we should see we have Amazon. And um, if we sort by date, you'll notice we have four of each date and that corresponds to the open, high, low, and close. So it's the um, one day summary basically of um, the Amazon stock price. So that's what our charting data data set is currently. Um, and if we wanna change, you know, if you don't wanna use Amazon, change the ticker, check the ticker to Microsoft or whatever else you want to use. Um, and so now let's um, get an initial chart. So let's first start by, we'll call our chart candlestick. And we're going to use the ggplot function. And the first argument we're going to use is charting data. So this is telling ggplot um, that we're working with the charting data function. So pretty straightforward. And now ggplot2 has a kind of strange conven convention in that you use the plus sign, right? So whenever you're adding um, features to the chart, you're gonna wanna use the plus sign. So it kind of builds, these, these, char these charts basically are building from the ground up. So there's a bunch of different components that can go into these charts as you're about to see. And so it makes it a lot easier to kind of keep track of them by using this plus feature. So, and I always, anytime I use a plus, I always do a, a hard return. So 
I'm going to do that now. Um, and then the next argument is going to be geo and box plot. And this is a box and, box and whisker plot. So basically what we're going to use is the um, open, high, low, and close at each date to create a box and whisker plot. And that's going to be um, what our chart is made up of. So that's how we're going to create the candlestick chart. And so um, the first argument is going to be um, actually another function, which is AES. So this is called the aesthetics. And everything in the aesthetics right, is going to map on to a column in our data set. So we are going to use in the, the what we want on the x axis. So we're going to use um, the date on the y-axis we're going to use the value and then the color feature we're going to use as movement so that's going to look like x equals and I'm going to say as character um, date so y equals value fill equals movement so we want to we want to cast the uh, date as character because uh, Date, actually having dates on the x-axis in ggplot2 for box plots doesn't work out very well. So we want this actually to be a character. Um, and so let's send this to the console. And so here we have in our global environment, we have our candlestick chart. And to actually show it, we will just type candlestick and send that to the console. Okay, and so here you can see our chart. So it's not super attractive right now. There's a bunch of problems with this chart, right? These colors, not very attractive. Um, but you can see you can see that at least apply the colors, right? So you can see the red for down days and this greenish, bluish color for the up days. Um, so the axes are not labeled right. The date, you can't read. Uh, the background color, I'm not really a fan of. There's no title. And so we're going to change all of that. Um, and so the first thing let's do is let's actually create a different color for the up down indicators. And so to do that, we are going to use the function scale fill manual. And we'll say values equal up equals. And in quotes, we're going to use the um, hexadecimal color code. So I'm going to use 0066FF for up. And down is going to be equal to four F's and two zeros. And so let's actually, before we run this, because these are two pretty other easy functions, we'll do a plus sign, a new level, say X lab. So this is our X label, we'll label that date. And we'll say Y lab equals stock price. So let's run that. Oops, unknown color down here. So I forgot to put a pound sign in front of this down color. So remember, whenever whenever you're using the hexadecimal, you got to use that pound sign. Um, okay, so now we can see blue is up and yellow is down. We have our new axis labels as well. So let's keep going and adding some bells and whistles here. So let's add uh, more labels. So we'll add. And this is going to look like a plus sign in the labs. And then rather than, um, right, so we, we, we actually have a few arguments that are going to go in this labs function. So there's not going to be a plus sign for all of the different labels that we're about to apply because they're all within this one labs argument, this labs function here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say title equals paste, oh, equals paste zero. And I'm going to use charting, charting data, name. Now I'm going to use the first entry in charting data name. Right, so in this case, this should be Amazon Inc. Yeah, Amazon.com Inc. And so um, what, what we're doing is we're creating a, a dynamic reference to the data set. So if we were to change this to Microsoft, right, then we would subset the Microsoft data set, and then this title would automatically choose Microsoft rather than Amazon. Actually, let's just take a look at that right now. Right, so now we're now we're um, now our data set is is charting Microsoft rather than Amazon. But let's go back to Amazon. Okay. And so now we're back to charting Amazon. And actually what we're gonna do is let's 
actually in the title we'll say the full name of the company and then in parentheses we'll say what the ticker symbol is and so to do that we're going to within our paste function we're going to use a comma quote and then we're going to just do an um the open paren comma ticker so that corresponds to this variable up here comma quote and end paren and so now if we send that we can see we have the ticker symbol in parentheses. And now let's add a subtitle. And we're going to do sort of the same thing that we did here. Um, so we're going to say charting data dollar sign sector one. And this is going to correspond to the sector. And so all we're doing, right, just a reminder, so we're going to charting data. We're going to sector, and we're taking the first entry, right? We could, we could really take any one of these entries, but we always know that this is going to be a data frame of, of one at the very least. So I always take just that first entry. Um, and then let's actually add a caption at the bottom. We'll kind of give a shout out to our source. So we'll say source is Yahoo Finance. Okay, and then let's see what that looks like. Okay, cool. So we can see um, we've got our source down here. We've got our subtitle, our title. Um, but this still isn't looking like the most attractive chart in the world. So let's just keep going. And um, we're just going to change a bunch of stuff really rapid fire here. And this is all going to be stuff um, in, well, actually, the first thing we need to do is let's change the y y-axis to um, dollars. So after labs, let's do another plus sign. Let's say scale. If I could type y continuous labels equal scales two colons and then dollar. Okay. So now we have the dollar signs on our y-axis. Um, and now we're just going to start changing a bunch of, of the stuff um, within the theme itself. So we're going to start changing the um, text color, the background, the background of the panel, the background of the plot, um, and the angle of the x-axis, because this is unreadable. So we're going to turn the um, x-axis into a 45 degree angle, and that should give us more readability there. So to do that, I'm going to type theme, and all of these arguments are going to be within the theme function. So to start, let's go with plot background equals, I'm going to say element rect and fill equals, in quotes, we'll say pound 17202a. So we're going to put a comma after that and let's copy this statement out. And we're also going to make our panel background the same color. And so let's actually see what happens when we run that. Okay, so now we have this kind of off grayish, bluish background. Um, but now we can't really read any of the, ac the um, data, right? So we can't read the access data. We can't read the, um, the title. Uh, we can't read the caption. So let's go ahead and change some of these texts to white, so let's say access.text.x equals element text in this case. Um, we're gonna say color equals, and um, the white color is just six Fs. So we can copy this out, and we're gonna do this for the Y axis. We are going to do this for the um, access title. So instead of text, we'll say title. Title. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Okay, so we're, so we're starting to get there. 
Um, oops. And actually, I think I overwrote. Okay, so I accidentally overwrote um, what I had in the y-axis te axis text with the title. So let's add back um, the axis axis text y. Jeez, if I could talk today, that'd be great. Okay, so now our y axis is um, the same color as the other axes. Let's keep going here. Um, so what else do we do? So we need to do the title. So let's do. Um, so that function is going to be plot dot text. Excuse me. It's going to be plot title. Okay, so that function is going to be plot dot title equals element text color equals six f's. Um, same thing for so subplot. Oops. Sorry, let's just start with plot subplot so dot subplot dot subtitle. Okay, so let's copy this and do plot.subtitle. Okay, now let's do plot.caption. I'm going to say that's element text. Color equals 6Fs. And let's actually change the face to italic and the size to 6. All right, so now let's run all this. Oops. And whoop. That might be part of my problem. Plot caption is not defined. Probably because I can't spell. Okay, so once we spell that correctly, we can see that now our caption um, is in here, our title, right, our subtitle. So all of these are making sense. So next, let's um, take care of this grid. So we're going to say panel dot grid major x equals element blank. So that's going to get rid of the uh, major x-axis. Let's actually just copy this down, and we're going to do this um, four more times. So major y. You're going to also say minor x, and we'll also say minor y. And for the major y, we're actually going to leave in the major y, but we're going to change the color. So for major y, we're going to use the function element line color equals. And I'm just going to use the color 273746. All right, so now let's see what this looks like. All right, so this is this is getting there. Um, the grid panel is much cleaner. It's not as in the way as it was previously. Um, so the next thing we should probably focus on is I actually think we should get rid of this legend. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of actually having that here. Um, so let's actually, let's actually get rid of that now. So 
just say legend. It should be a legend position. Okay, equals none. Um, and let's also tilt the direction of the x-axis. So, um, so for x-axis, x text. So we already have that up here. So we're also going to add an angle argument equals 45. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so but now these are, right, it's sort of centered in the middle of the date. So it's kind of creeping over to the next um, box of whisker plot. So let's actually get it so that the end of the date is matched up at the bottom of the axis and is right underneath the box and whisker spot plot it corresponds to. And so the way we're going to do that is within the x axis, we are going to say h just equals 1 and v just equals 1. So both of these two arguments are just going to adjust um, both horizontally and then vertically. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, that is much better. Um, and now the other thing is that the um, outline of the box and whisker is a little hard to see, and these um, box and whiskers themselves are a little, they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of wide, so let's skinny those up. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna come back up top, and in our original geom box, right outside of the aesthetic. So what, whatever is inside of the aesthetic corresponds to a column. Um, whatever is outside is going to be um, just a factor of the chart that we can apply for the entire chart, right? So for the fill, which is the color, we, we gave it the argument movement, which corresponds to this chart. And so it is giving a different color based off of what the value is in the column. So when we're outside of the aesthetic column, we're giving a value that isn't dependent we're giving a value to the chart that isn't dependent on what the value of a given column is. So we are going to say color equals D0, D3, D4, and width equals 0 0.2. Um, I messed something up up here. Actually, let's widen this so I can see. Okay, so I didn't put a quote up here, and I tried to put a quote on my width. So let's try that again. Okay, so now we can see there um, the outline right of the candlestick is much easier to see now that it, it's sort of a what it's a whitish grayish color. And um, we can see that the box and whisker plots themselves are much skinnier. Okay, so let's save this file. We'll save it as charting. And then that is it for this video. Um, so in the next video, I think we're going to cover some more um, data cleaning. So we're going to calculate some performance metrics. Um, and then we're going to chart some of those metrics. We're going to look at sort of long-term rolling averages and some industry metrics. Um, and then we'll create some plots around that that we'll be able to add to our shiny dashboard. Um, so looking forward to that. Um, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you continue on to the next video.